Okay, you're gonna have to forgive me. Um, we just moved into our new house, which I'm super stoked on, but uh, well, I'm still unpacking and I, I can't find anything. Like I'm using the video mic NTG with like a really long, I don't even know how I found this, but a really long three and a half mil cable. So audio is probably gonna be not the greatest. I haven't even like sound treated this room. Still building out the studio. Maybe we'll make a video on that here at some point, but uh, anyways, so sorry about it, but my, my goal is to be more consistent this year with YouTube, so uh, this is what you get. So today we're gonna be talking about neutral density filters and uh, Small Rig was kind enough to send these square filters out to me. So uh, we'll talk about these and uh, we're just gonna talk about neutral density filters in general. Now, if you're not fil familiar with ND filters, which is short for neutral density filters, essentially in layman's terms, uh, there are sunglasses for your lens. Now, why would you use those? If, if you're new to video, maybe you've dabbled in photography or you're really well versed in photography, but you're not so well versed in video. Well, if, you, if you've learned about the exposure triangle of uh, photography, you have your ISO, your aperture, your f-stop or t-stop, whatever, and then you have your shutter speed. Well, unfortunately with video, except for some for creative reasons, your shutter speed really isn't um, part of that exposure triangle anymore, just because you wanna still stick to that 180 degree shutter angle. So that's where ND or neutral density filters come into play because neutral density filters, what they do, they darken your image. So uh, instead of using your shutter speed and cranking up your shutter speed to make your image darker so you're not blowing out your highlights or whatever the case may be, you put on these neutral density filters. They're very popular. I'm not the first one on YouTube to talk about the topic uh, for good reason. Uh, I use them in, on every single shoot. So, um, so yeah, so with that being said, uh, let's talk about a couple of different solutions of how you would actually bring ND in, in front of your sensor. Well, if you have a Canon RF mount camera, say you have the R5 or R3 or R5C or something like that, or like this, the Red Komodo or the V Raptor, uh, they have the RF mount. And the cool thing about that is you can actually use one of these. This is a, uh, this is a little adapter that Canon makes and you can slide in this little variable ND. And as you can see, it darkens up the image. It's a variable ND. So it's great, it sits behind the lens and it's like a, a faux built-in variable ND solution, which is really cool. And if you're on a full frame uh, camera, such as the Canon R3, that's a great solution. But if you're on the Red Komodo and you wanna have that full frame field of view, uh, you have to use something like this Canon uh, 0.71 times a focal reducer. And with that, well, you don't have the ability to use uh, NDs, any, a variable ND adapter anymore. Behind the lens, you're gonna have to use something in front. Now, we're not gonna talk about cameras that have built-in ND filters. Uh, there are cameras out there, a lot of cinema cameras have those, like uh, a lot of the Canon Cinema line and uh, even like the Blackmagic Pocket 6K Pro and the Ursa Mini Pro cameras. But even then, some of those NDs that are built in, especially as you increase the strength, have a pretty bad color shift, so you may not even want to use those to begin with. So that kind of brings us to the front of the lens, which is kind of the next uh, natural progression or next place where you're gonna be able to put uh, uh, neutral density filters in there. So you kind of have three main options, really. You have a single strength ND filters that are screw on. You can use variable ND filters or you can use these square filters. Now of the three, probably my least favorite, and I actually don't even have any because um, because of my workflow, I just don't see them very useful in my workflow, but the single uh, screw on filters, the single stop or single strength screw on filters, I don't find those uh, very useful. Uh, and we'll get to that here in a second why um, with one of the advantages with these. So for me, I prefer to use a variable ND filter or these square filters. Now, why would you use one over the other? Well, 
Variable ND filters are really good for really fast paced run and gun style filmmaking. Like I do a, a quite a bit of run and gun kind of DACA style filmmaking. And that's where a, a system like this comes really into play because uh, you, have, you have the ability to quickly change exposure on the fly and just kind of get really minute adjustments and be able to just change it on the fly. That's the whole thing is convenience. That's the biggest advantage of variable NDs is convenience. Now, one of the main disadvantages of variable NDs, and like this applies to all NDs across the board, whether it's this one by Freewell or the Polar Pro ones or Tiffin or whoever else, they're all gonna have a color cast. And if they tell you that it doesn't have a color cast, uh, they're either like, breaking barriers in science and physics, or they're just straight up lying to you. Every single variable ND filter that I've tested has had a color shift. Some of them not as strong as others, but that's just something that you have to keep in mind that you're gonna have to deal with is a color shift with variable NDs. Now, for the convenience factor of running gun filmmaking, that's something that I just decide to live with because there are instances where uh, I will live with the, the color shift in post and deal with the convenience while I'm filming. It just depends on the scenario. Oh, all right, I, I just realized, sorry for the interruption, but I just realized that as I was editing this that I left out a pretty big disadvantage when it comes to variable ND filters, enough so that I felt like I should, you know, put it in here and interject and this felt as good a place as any to put it. But it has to do with vignetting. On variable ND filters, especially on a really wide lens, um, on a full frame sensor even, like on, on the Komodo or Aza Speed Booster, on a really wide lens, you can get pretty bad vignetting and you can get it like, you know, in the corner, like maybe the opposite corners or all four corners, just depends on uh, what your setup is. And that's just something that you have to keep in mind if you're on a full frame sensor and you get that vignetting uh, from um, something like this, then you're going to have to uh, crop in and post. So something to consider, but you don't really get that with the square filters because that square filter is going to be uh, much wider than that, uh, than that field of view is going to see. So um, yeah, let's get back to it. The other disadvantage, and this applies to the circular filter, a single style, any kind of screw on filter, is the fact that you can't use these on every single lens out there. For the most part, 82 mil is the biggest, at right now at the time you're recording this, is typically the, the biggest filter thread that you can find. But the problem is, is if you have a lens that either has a bigger front diameter, or maybe you'll have a, a cinema lens that doesn't even accept screw on filters, or maybe even a fisheye lens, or, or whatever the case may be, that's when these screw on filters become pretty much useless because you really can't attach them anyways. So that kind of leads us into the use of these square filters. And that's one of the main advantages of these square filters. The fact that you can use these in front of any lens, no matter what, because of how wide they are and they go to a matte box and this matte box sits in front of the lens, either on a support or sometimes they can attach right into the front of the lens if you have the right adapter. So that's advantage number one with these filters is the, the usability and the adaptability to any lens. Now, another advantage has to do with color shift or lack thereof. You're not you're just not gonna get a color shift with these single stop ND filters if it's a quality ND filter. So that's typically why uh, you see in Hollywood, people are using these, uh, these single stage, these single strength ND filters in front of their cameras because it's gonna give you the cleanest image possible. Now, disadvantage is, um, they're not very quick to change out. I mean, you can get like these little trays that'll kind of hold these, that'll kind of help it make it a little bit quicker to change out. But this isn't something that you're really gonna wanna use um, in a really fast paced running gun. It's just gonna take too long. Like if you're like worried about missing a moment, like at a wedding or whatever the case may be, like don't use these. These is just like not the right tool for the job. Uh, where I see these, really fitting in is like in a production environment where maybe you're on set and you have a first AC that can help assist you swapping out ND filters, um, all that kind of stuff. Or if you're, you're out filming, but you have a crew, that's where I see these things being uh, much more practical than something like a variable ND filter. And if image quality is of the utmost importance to you and you have the time to do the, 
ND filter swap, the tray swaps and all that kind of stuff, then these are always gonna give you much better uh, image quality than you're gonna get with a variable ND filter. So uh, this is from Small Rig. Like I said, uh, they sent me these two. This is a, a, a two stop and a four stop and 0 0.6 and 1.2. So we'll go ahead and kind of show you what's in these. And I actually really like this because it ships in this hard case right here, which is perfect for transport. So you have the you have the case right here. It's got this nice foam padding right here. So if you don't keep these in trays and you want to transport them, this is a great way to transport them. And then you can put them in trays when you get on set. On the very bottom corner, you can uh, identify right here what strength it is. What I always like to do and I always recommend is make sure that you place your ND filter in uh, no, or, or whatever it is, but especially ND filters in the tray so that you can read it from the front just so it's a lot easier to like see what ND you have on in front of the lens on set. Just It's just a good habit to get in. So with this, I have the little small rig matte box, the little mini matte box. And uh, I have the tray right here. So I'll just go ahead and install it right here. It's got this little tab. So one thing I like about these little trays is it just keeps the, uh, keeps the install really quick and it keeps your fingers uh, from touching the edges of these. So it just kind of keeps for a much cleaner, cleaner install and not giving smudges or anything. And um, it kind of protects the edges too from getting scratched and all that stuff. So all you do is just slide it on here and then it'll kind of lock into place. Install this right here, and now I've got a nice, fancy little matte box, and it just makes you look a lot cooler on set than um, having variable ND filters, because that's what's really important in life. Let's go ahead and uh, just do, I'm gonna just end this video, I'm gonna roll some comparisons, just kind of show you what uh, zero stops with no tray, and then uh, two stop and four stop just to kind of give you an idea of uh, the color cast, and I'll compare it to uh, this Freewell variable ND filter that I have right here because I, honestly I think this is probably the best variable ND solution out there in the market. So I'm going to compare it to that and I'm just going to do uh, again two stops and four stops. It's got these little markers so I'm going to get as close as possible. So um, with that I am I am physically going to sign off and I uh, hope you like the little comparison and um, thank you for watching. I'm going to try to be more consistent. Maybe the studio will look and sound a little better in the future. But uh, until the next one, appreciate you watching and I hope you have a fantastic day and hope to catch you in the next one. Peace.